welcome back to this course so today in this video we are going to start our new section in which we learn about mongodb okay. so mongodb is the database that we are going to use in this course so first of all let's see what is mongodb mongodb is a cross platform document oriented database that provides high performance and easy scalability so first of all mongodb is cross platform means that we can use mongodb on every operating system and also mongodb is document oriented database this is pretty much like json okay so that's why it is document oriented database and it provides highly performance mongodb is very fast and highly scalable so this is the reason that's why we use mongodb with node.js because it is very fast and scalable next mongodb works on the concept of collection and document if you have any knowledge about database like sql or sql then you know that in sql we have tables rows and columns but in mongodb because it is document oriented database that's why it doesn't have any table or rows and columns in fact it has a concept of collection and document okay so first of all let's see what is collection so collection is a group of mongodb documents so document are pretty much like the rows that we use in tables so it is the collection of documents or records for example we have a collection of employees so in that collection we have data of multiple employees so data of each employee is known as a document and then we gather all the data of all employees we can say that is a collection of employees okay and after that it is equivalent to rdb ms table rdb ms means relational database management system so collection is equivalent to this table also i want to tell you that mongodb is non relational database management system okay after that what is document a document is a set of key value pairs a document have dynamic schema when we store our data in mongodb database it is pretty much like json okay we know that json use key value pair also in mongodb a document use a key value pair after that document has dynamic schema means every document in a collection can has its own fields for example one record has two fields name and age but the second may have different schema like name age and salary so it is highly dynamic database in which each document can have its own schema okay after that let's understand it with the help of a diagram first of all table so this is table of sql when we use relational database or sql then our data is stored in form of table like you can see that here we have two records of employees here if we convert this same data in non relational database like mongodb then it will look like this so this is the collection of these employees both database systems have same data in their own way you can see that in the collection we have our records in form of json it is not json it is pretty much like json okay so table and collection is equivalent like you can see in the diagram one record in table is known as row and one record in collection is known as document okay so i hope that you understand next let's discuss about some advantages of using mongodb first of all mongodb is a document database in which one collection holds different documents as we have discussed in our previous slide that mongodb is document database so in one collection we can have different documents with different schema so this is the biggest advantage of using mongodb after that uses json like structure called json okay so it uses a structure like json that is key value but it is not actually json it is json so here b stands for binary okay so it is called binary json after that we have it uses the key value pair so it makes our work more easier because our data always will be stored in key value pair we can access our data using that particular key okay and after that it can store multiple values for example if you want to store data of a blog post okay so we know that there are some comments on that blog now what we will do we will create an array of comments and store that in our mongodb but when we discuss about relational database like sql then we cannot store the multiple values what we will do in that case we create a separate table for comments and then we give that table id to the comments field in the table so in mongodb it is very easy to manage multiple values we simply pass array of those values after that mongodb is easy to scale as i have discussed before it is highly scalable that's why it is most commonly used with node js after that it is most popular database with node js so you have this one about the stacks like mean and merv so in both stacks we have mongodb common so mongodb is most popular database used with node js 
and that's why we are using mongodb with node.js in this course so these are some advantages of using mongodb when we will write our queries of mongodb then you will have a better understanding on how these all concept works so i hope that you understand what we have discussed in this video so in our next video we are going to install mongodb and after that we will start writing our queries so that's it for this video i will see you in the next video welcome back to this course so in our previous video we have seen that what is mongodb and what are advantages of using mongodb and today in this video we are going to set up our mongodb environment and also we are going to install the mongodb software in our systems okay so first of all you have to go to mongodb.com official website then you have to click on the software then the community server click on that and after that simply click on this download mongodb button from here and after that you have to click on this mongo community server click on that then you have to select the version which is the 4.22 4.2.2 which is the current release select that then select the operating system windows you can select operating system according to your uh, system and then click this package i use msi then click on this download button and thank you for downloading mongodb community server and you can see that the downloading has been started so i have already downloaded so i simply cancel it from here and go to the folder where i have this mongodb setup go to your download folder and simply open that setup simply click on next i accept next click on this complete button then next next and install it will take some time to install into your computer systems after completing the installation you have to simply click on this finish button and click on no right now and then you have to set the environment variable for mongodb okay so simply go to your local disk c local disk c then program files then mongodb then server 4.2 bin and simply copy this path from here copy go to environment variable i type here environment so edit system environment variables click on that click on environment variables then click on this path edit and add here new paste that link uh, path here and click on ok ok and ok and before doing anything one more thing you have to do here is you have to simply go back to local disk c and here you have to create a new folder with the name data and in this folder you have to create another folder with the name db so our database will store our local database files in this folder okay so you have to create these folders by your own in local disk c first of all the data and in data folder you have to create a folder with the name db okay after that simply you have to uh, run the mongodb server okay you can use the command prompt you can use the powershell you can use the git bash whatever you want i am going to simply use the visual studio terminal which is git bash so i simply make it bigger like this you have to type here first of all you have to start the mongodb server for that you have to type here mongod whenever you use local database for example we want to use database locally we want to store our database or our data in this computer so for that purpose you have to run the mongodb server first but when we use our online database then we don't have to start our server by typing mongod okay so right now we are using a local database so i simply type here mongod and press enter and you can see that our server has been started successfully okay so our server has been started you can see that listening on this local host on this port 27017 so mongodb listens on this port on this local host okay so our server has been started now you have to click on this plus button to open new git bash terminal so you can see that this is one which is running mongodb server you have to click on this plus button now we are using the second bash terminal okay so here you have to simply type mongo m o n g o and now we are in terminal of mongo we can write our mongodb queries here this means that our mongodb has been set up successfully and now we can use that and write our queries okay so this is a video in which we have set up our the mongodb environment in our next video we are going to start creating our new databases and write our own queries 
to understand MongoDB. Okay, so I hope that you understand. That's it for this video. I will see you in the next video. Welcome back to this course. So in our previous video, we have set up the MongoDB, and today in this video, we are going to use our simple uh, MongoDB queries to create database, to delete database, to create collections, to delete collections like that. Okay. So first of all, I simply type here MongoD to start my server. I press enter. You can see that our server has been started on port 27017. Okay, so I open my new terminal here. And I type here simply Mongo to start my Mongo terminal. I press enter, and you can see that my Mongo terminal has been started. First of all, to create a database, you have to type here use and then the name of database. For example, I type here Amazon, which is the name of the database. When I type this use Amazon and press enter, you can see that switch to DB Amazon. This means that our database has been created. Now if I type here simply DB, you can see that I get Amazon which is now selected database. Because we are using this Amazon, when you press DB, you can see that which database are you currently on. Okay, so I am currently on Amazon. And now to see all databases that you have right now, you can simply type the query show DBs. Show DBS. When I press enter, you can see that I don't have Amazon in this list. Because Whenever we create a new database, we always have to insert some data in that, otherwise we cannot see that, okay? So right now, show DB doesn't work, it doesn't show our new database, okay? So for that, we have to simply insert some data in that. So I simply type here db.products. Don't get confused with this query right now, we are going to learn about that in our next video. So dot insert to insert some data, and I type here um, name. I type here MacBook and I press enter. So insert it successfully. Now if I type here show DBs, so this is type here show S H O W D B S. Now you can see that Amazon is present in this list. Okay. So these are three commands. First of all, we, whenever we want to create database, we can simply type use and then type the name of the database Amazon. So then our database will be created. Then to know that which database we are currently using, we can simply type here db and it will give you the name of database right now which you are using. This time Amazon. And to show all databases, you can simply type here show db to give you all the uh, list of all databases right now locally. Okay. Now we know that we have to create a collection in database. So to do that, I simply type here db dot create collection. Then type the name of the collection. I type here users like that and press enter and it is successful. And now to show all the collections, you have to simply type here show collections. Press enter and you can see that we currently have two collections products and users. But you may got a question in your mind that we have just created user collection from where these products come from. When we type statement like this db.products.insert mongodb automatically creates this collection for us we don't have to create collection manually but we can do that by using this function which is create collection but we don't have to do that mongodb will create that for us okay now we can also delete this uh, users collection to do that i simply type here db dot users dot draw okay so db means that the current database the users is the collection which is this one then we have to type the drop which means that delete this user collection from this database okay i press enter you can see that true means that our collection has been deleted successfully now if i type here show collections and press enter you can see that we only have one collection which is products like this okay we can also delete our entire database so for that i simply type here db dot drop database like this okay so this db means that the database currently we are using drop that currently using database simple as that and when i press enter you can see that dropped amazon okay one means that the amazon database has been successfully deleted now if i type here show dbs you can see that amazon is not present in this list it has been deleted successfully okay so we have learned six queries in this video so I just conclude them. First of all, if I go to top, 
whenever we want to create a database you simply type here use then the name of database which is this one okay so use amazon it will create the amazon database for us then to show that which database we are currently using we can simply type db and it will return us the current database that we are using which is right now amazon okay and the third one is show dbs to show all databases we can use show dbs command to show our old databases okay and after that we have used this create collection query okay so whenever we want to create a collection we can simply type here db which is the current database dot create collection that means that create collection in current database with the name users and it will create that collections for us okay i repeat it once again we don't have to create collections by our own manually mongodb will create for us automatically okay after that to show all the collections in that database you can simply type the command like show collections and it will give you the all collection list that is present in that database okay so in this case there are two collections in that database products and users in amazon database and after that you can also delete a collection to do that we have to simply type here db which is current database then dot users which is the collection then use this drop method to delete this collection okay and we can also delete the entire database to do that i simply type here db dot db means the current database dot drop database in simple words this means that delete the current database okay so it is successfully dropped here and when we type show dbs again you can see that amazon is not present in this list okay so these are the six queries that we have learned today these are simple one in this video we have just learned how we can create database how we can view our database how we can create collections how we can read collections how we can read database okay so in our next video we are going to learn the queries that help us to create documents in collections okay so i hope that you understand what we have done in this video so that's it for this video i will see you in the next video welcome back to this course so in our previous video we have seen that how we can create database how we can delete database how we can create collections delete collections all stuff like that okay so today in this video we are going to see some queries that help us to insert or create new documents in collections okay so for that i simply go to mongo terminal and type here use amazon to create amazon database because we have deleted amazon database in our previous video also so i simply type here use amazon to create amazon then i simply type here the query that help us to insert documents in collection okay so i simply type here db which is the current database that is amazon dot the name of the collection we know that we don't have to create uh, the collection manually mongodb will create that for us okay so i simply type here products I want to enter some products of Amazon in this database. So I simply type here db dot products, and products is the name of the collection. Then I use the method called insert. Now we have two insert methods. One is insert one, and one is insert many. Insert one help us to insert only one document at a time, and insert many help us to insert more than one documents in collection. So first of all, I use the insert one because I want to insert only one. document right now in this collection which is the products then in this method i have to pass an object like this and in here i simply type here name which is macbook then i pass comma here and type here price 1500 then again comma and then type here category and type here computers like that okay so first of all i have type here db which is the current database then i have used this dot products which is collection that mongodb will create that automatically for us okay so db dot this collection which is products and insert one method help us to insert one document at a time in the collection okay so insert one and in this function we have to pass object that we want to insert okay we know that mongodb use key value pair okay so this is name is the key and macbook is the value price is the key and 1500 is the value so name is macbook price is 1500 and category is computers okay so when i simply press enter here you can see that acknowledge true and inserted id object id means that our document has been successfully inserted in this 
collection okay so if i simply type here db dot products dot find now find method help us to show all the documents in this collection which is products when i press enter you can see that i have one object here okay that has name macbook price 1500 and category computers you can see that we also have one more data here that is id so this id is automatically created by mongodb for us which is always unique we can use this id to find any document in that collection so right now we have only one object in this collection which is this one okay so now let's see how we can use insert many method to insert more than one documents at a time so i simply type here db which is ignorant database dot products which is the name of the collection then dot insert many and in this i have two pass objects that i want okay so i simply separate them i want to insert two objects okay so i simply type here name i type here like iphone 11 then i type price i type here 900 then i type here the category i type here electronics okay after that i enter the second object that i simply type here name which is a headphone like that and then i have to insert the price which is like hundred dollars and then i have to insert here the category simply type here electronics okay so first of all we have used db dot products then we have used the insert many method in the in that method we have to pass more than one objects to insert many objects at a time okay so this time we are passing two objects one is this one and one is this one okay so i simply press enter here first of all i want to tell you that i forgot that whenever we want to use the insert many method we have to pass it in array okay i simply just start an array here like this i type here this one and here type here again okay so you can see that whenever we want to use the insert many method we always have to pass array of objects i forgot to mention that you can see that insert many method then we have to pass an array like this okay so this is array in array we have to pass multiple objects okay so now if i press enter here you can see that insert ids we have inserted two objects in our collection which is the a product so i simply type here db dot products dot find now you can see that we have three products right now in this collection which is macbook iphone and headphone so these are the two commands that help us to insert data in the collection so i just repeat these queries once again first of all i have used the insert one method db which is the current database then we have products which is the collection then we have used this insert one method to insert only one object in the collection which is products okay and then in this function we have to pass an object that contains data okay then we have used the insert many method and we forgot to put array in that whenever we want to use insert many method we have to pass an array of objects okay so you can see that here db.products insert many then in this function i have passed this array you can see this bracket and this bracket and in this array we have to pass these objects we have to pass array of objects okay and after you can see that we have inserted all three products in our database so i hope that you understand what we have done in this video so in our next video we are going to discuss about how we can use the reading queries okay so i will see you next video welcome back to this course so in our previous video we have inserted some data in our collection which is the products so in this video we are going to learn all the queries that help us to read data or help us to find the data you have to pay your attention on this video because in this video we are going to learn about 10 to 15 queries okay so first query is that how we can find all the documents in a collection so first of all i simply type here use amazon which is our current database now i simply type here db dot products dot find we have also learned this query in our previous video when i press enter you can see that we get all the 
documents in the collection okay so this is the first query that help us to read or find all the documents in that collection okay now the next query is that db dot products dot find you can see that this data is not formatted like json now if i want to format it i simply type here another function that is pretty p r e w t y this one now if i press enter you can see that our data has been formatted like json as we have seen our data in the api you can see that it is formatted this is unformatted data and this is formatted data you can use this dot pretty method to structure your uh, data if you want okay so simple db dot products dot find all the documents in this collection and then pretty means that format that documents okay okay so now if i want to find some specific document in this collection for that i simply type here db dot products dot find and in this find i have to pass an object i simply type here find the object that has name macbook like this now if i press enter you can see that i only get one result here which is macbook so if i want to find some specific document i can simply type here db dot products dot find and then pass the object in that okay now let's write this query again if i type here db dot products dot find and i type here category and i type here um for example electronics and i press enter you can see that this time i get only one result okay so we have just misspelled our uh, spellings here we can fix that when we will learn about update queries right now you can see that if i just type a category electronics you can see this object here right now okay here is this electronics i have misspelled c here that's why it is giving only one object okay now the next query is if i just want to show some specific data of the object for example if i just want to find all the documents in collection and i just want to read their names for example if i type here db dot products dot find this means that find all the pro products then i simply type here another parameter and type here name and i type here one and when i press enter you can see that i get all the documents but i get only names of them so if you want to see some specific data or specific fields of document you can simply type here document dot find then the name equal to one mean that i just want to read the names of that documents only okay you can see that id is also here if i want to hide the id i can simply type here db dot products dot find all the products then i want to show only names and i don't want to show the id so i simply type here zero now if i press enter you can see that we only get names here like that so in this way we can also select some specific fields in document okay now we can also use one more method here if i just get back my previous query and type here one more method which is limit if I type here limit two means that I only want to show first two documents. I type here two. When I press enter, you can see that I only get two results here. Okay. If I just get back that query and type here one and press enter, you can see that I only get one record here. So we can use the dot limit method to only show limited amount of results. Okay. So next we have to learn about less than, greater than, less than, equal to, and greater than equal to. Okay. So if we want to find the products that has price greater than $150, so how we can do that? To do that, I simply type here db dot products dot find this method, and here I type this object and type here price. And now I have to tell that I want to select all the products or all the documents that has price less than $150. So I simply type another object here and type here dollar sign less than 150 like this. Okay, so db dot products was fine. Then I simply pass here object that says price, then colon, then an other two curly brackets, and in these brackets I simply type here dollar sign 
then LT means less less than 150 like that okay and if I press enter here you can see that I only get one result here that is 100 so this time headphones is less than 150 dollars so we get this result if I type here LTE means less than equal to now if I press enter you can see that I get same result that is 100 because 100 is less than 150 okay now if I want to get the products that has price greater than 800 so for that I simply get my query back and type here GT will mean greater than greater than 800 I want to find all the products that are greater than 800 I press enter you can see that I get two results here this MacBook which is $1500 and iPhone 11 which is $900 and now we can also use our fourth command that greater than equal to so I just type here a GTE and type here 900 and I press enter again I get two results right here okay so these are four queries less than less than equal to greater than and greater than equal to that help us to filter our documents or our data now we also have two more queries that is and and or query okay so if i want to find product that has price less than 200 and its category must be electronics so for that i have to use the and so i simply type here db dot products products then i type here find and in there i first of all type the curly brackets and type here dollar sign and because i want to find the product that has price less than 200 and its category must be electronics so for that i simply type here and and i put colon here and pass an array here so in this array i have to pass the objects the first one is the price so i simply type here price which must be dollar sign less than 200 okay and after that category must be electronics I don't type C here because I have misspelled electronics here so I will fix that in our next video when we will discuss about update queries okay so I, for, for right now I am going to type here electronics like that okay now you can see that query products dot find and I have used this and here then I want to find the products that has price less than 200 and category must be electronics okay now if I just press enter here you can see that I get a result here this headphone that has price less than $200 and its category is electronics okay so in this way we can also use this and to filter our results now to use the or I simply type here or instead of and so I remove that and I type here I want to find all the products that has price um, greater than 500 that has price greater than 500 and their category must be electronics like that and now if i just press enter you can see that i get two results here these two ones okay so first one has price greater than 500 which is 1500 so that's why it prints here you can see its category its category is computer okay now we have used or operator that means that the result must satisfy this condition or this condition so this time is it satisfy this one which is price less greater than 500 and for the second document the price is also greater than 500 and category is also electronic so that's why it prints it here so these are the commands that help us to find query that help us to filter our documents i hope that you understand i know that this is a bit confusing right now but you have to learn these queries we have to build these queries according to our projects so i hope that you understand so in our next video we are going to learn about queries that help us to update documents so i will see you in the next video welcome back to this course so in our previous video we have discussed that how we can use 
the queries to filter or find our documents okay so in this video we are going to see the queries that help us to update our documents so first of all let's see how we can use that i simply type here use amazon database now to update the documents so first of all i type here db dot products dot find all like that now first of all i want to update the price of this macbook okay i want to change its price to 1600 dollars so what i do i simply type here db dot products dot update now we have two update methods one is update one and one is update many now whenever we use update one it means that we want to update only one document and if we use update many this means that we want to update more than one documents in this collection okay so first of all let's use update one update one and in this method first of all i type that name should is macbook and i want to set its new price to 1600 so for that i simply type here comma and in here i have to pass the new value so i simply type here dollar set this one and then colon then again brackets and i type here price 1600 so simple db door products would update one update one method help us to update only one document in the collection then i pass that name is macbook i want to change the price of this document that has name macbook okay then i have used a set to set the new price i simply type here dollar set then i pass a price 1600 to set its new price to 1600 okay now if i just press enter here you can see that acknowledge true match count true modified count one one means true this means that our data has been updated now if i just type here db.products.find you can see that our new price has been set, set here which is 1600 so in this way we can update data of a specific field in our mongodb now for example i want to update its category because we know that we have misspelled that in our first video okay so for that i simply type here db dot products dot update one first of all i type here name equals to headphone and then i have to set the category to electronics okay now if i press enter we got some error here so uh, i have to type here this bracket let us remove one from here now if i press enter it is successfully modified i see it you can see that our category has been successfully updated here now in my first video i have told you that each document can have its own schema means that in this object we have three fields or three values now in second object it may have more than three fields okay now let's insert a field in one of these objects for example i want to set the company of this first object only for the first object so i simply type here db dot products dot update one and i type here uh, name macbook and i type here set its uh, company to apple We know that there is no field apple in this schema but we have to add it because we know that mongodb is dynamic database and and each document can have its own schema so simply update one where name is equal to macbook and set its company to apple now if i just press enter and see my database again 
you can see that it has one more field here which is a company apple and the rest of two documents doesn't have any field like that company okay so in this way we can use the update one method now let's use the update many method to update more than one documents in collection so for that i simply type here db dot products dot update many okay and after that i simply type here their category is electronics and i want to set let's change electronics to simple electronic we'll just remove s from that so i simply type here category to electronic i just remove s from here now if i just press enter you can see that we have here modified count zero meaning that nothing has been updated because we have just misspelled here electronics so i simply get back my query here and type here T R O N I C S. Now, if I just press enter here, you can see that two documents have been modified here. Okay, so I simply search that again, find all the the documents. You can see that it, the electronics has been changed to electronic. So in this way, we can use the update many query or method to update more than one document at a time. So I hope that you understand what you have done in this video. So that's it for this video. I will see you in the next video in which we learn about how we can delete our documents by using our queries. So I will see you in the next video. Welcome back to this course. So in our previous video, we have seen that how we can update our documents by using the update queries. And now in this video, we are going to discuss about queries that help us to delete our documents from collections. Okay. So we have two methods. One is remove and one is delete many. Now with the help of remove method, we can delete only one document at a time. But with the help of delete many method, we can delete more than one documents at a time. Okay, so let's see how we can delete only one document at a time. So I simply type here use Amazon and I simply type here db dot products dot find like that. Now, first of all, I want to delete the first record, which is the MacBook. So for that, I simply type here db dot products dot remove. And in this method, I pass here, remove the document that has name uh, MacBook like that. Okay. If I press enter here, you can see that re removed one mean that one record has been removed. If I just type here products dot find debit or products dot find, you can see that the first record has been deleted successfully. The first document has been deleted successfully. Okay, we have only left two here. Now, if I want to delete both of these queries, I just type here the delete many method. So I simply type here db dot products dot delete many to delete more than one document at a time. So I simply type here delete many records delete all the documents that has category of electronics like that and or electronic only we have removed s in our previous video so i just remove s from here so db dot products dot delete many category category is equal to electronic now if i just press enter you can see that delete count two means that two documents has been deleted successfully now if i type here db dot products dot find you can see that we have nothing here because we have deleted all the three documents in the products collection so i hope that you understand so in this video we have discussed about two methods one is remove and one is delete many A remove method help us to remove one document at a time but with the help of delete many function we can delete more than one document at a time as you have seen in this video so it, this is the last video of this section in which you learn about how to delete documents from collection so we have performed our all operations create read update and delete which, which stands for crud 
and these are the operations that all developers must need to know about i hope that you understand about that so in our next section we are going to learn about mongoose which is the package of mongodb that help us to to use mongodb in node js applications and help us to develop them very quickly okay so i hope that you understand what you have done in this video so i will see you in the next video welcome back to this course so before doing anything i want to show you that which project we are going to create in this section okay so this is the project employee database system that performs all the crud operations okay for example if you want to there is no employee right now in this table if i want to add an employee i simply click on this add new employee and i add the name here for example i type here john then i type the designation like boss then i type its salary like like 20000 then i click on add to database when i click on that you can see that employee data added to database successfully and you can see data here okay if i add one more here i type here mike designation will be manager and salary will be like 8000 when i click on add to database employee data added to database successfully you can see right here okay now if i want to search an employee i simply click on this search option click on here employee name like john and search in database you can see that you get its result if i type here something like that doesn't exist in database like this if i click on search in database you can see that employer does not exist with this name okay so this is the search operation if i go to the home page and if i want to edit some of the data like this one i click on edit now if i want to change the salary for example 18 20 000 to 18 thousand if i click on update employee you can see that employee data updated successfully and you can see that its salary has been changed from here okay now if i want to delete some employee if i simply click on this one delete you can see that employee deleted successfully okay so this is the basic project that we are going to create throughout this section i hope that you will like that basically this is our first project that uses node.js express and mongodb okay in this project we are going to use three to four new packages and we're also going to follow the best practices to develop this project we are going to follow partials we are going to make separate files for each function and in this project we are also going to use our configuration file for our database okay so i hope that you will like that project now before closing this video i'm going to tell you that i have designed this basically application using bootstrap and also you can see that table here that has a filter here that has a search here that has a sorting here sorting and then this is navigation i don't have created this by my own i have used some scripts some table okay so these are the scripts that you have to add in the project i will give all these links in the resource of this section okay you can download that and use that you don't need to design it by your own because we already have in on the internet that we can use it is free to use okay and also in this project i am not going to design all the project you have to design it by your own because if i design it it will take too much time for that okay so it is simple you i hope that you know about the front end so that's it for this video in our next video we are going to properly start building our project welcome back to this course so in our previous section we have discussed about mongodb we have learned all the queries to perform different operations like create update read and delete okay so in this section we are going to build a real world project which is employee database system that will help us to understand all these concept clearly okay so in this project we will use node express and mongodb together so that we can understand that how basically these three technologies work together okay now this video is about what is mongoose we have learned about mongodb in our previous section and now in this section we are going to use this mongoose package to interact with our database it is just like express for example you node.js and use the framework called express with node.js in the same way the database is mongodb but we will use mongoose package to interact with the mongodb database in express okay you can see from its official definition that mongoose is a mongodb object modeling tool designed to work in a synchronous environment mongoose sports both promises and callbacks okay so this is the object of mongodb which help us to model our data okay 
so it, it supports promises and callbacks definitely we are going to use the promises because it is the latest technology that we have to use okay so this is the package that we have to use you can see it's weekly download over 692,000 plus downloads weekly so this is very easy to use package that makes our work more easier so we use that in our course okay so in our next video we are going to start properly creating that project which is employee database system in which we use all the concepts that how node.js express mongodb works together to build an application okay so i will see you in the next video welcome back to this course so from this video we are going to start building our employee database project before getting into the coding part i want to tell you that in this uh, project i am not going to design the project i am not going to write the html or css i have already designed all the pages you can see that here these are not easiest files these are dot html files i will convert these files into ejs in front of you okay so you can design your html according to your requirements this is simple html template for the home page this is the edit.html template for this update employee data this is add new form new.html and then search.html to search our employee so these are the four html pages that you have to design if you want to build this project with me okay i will share these files with you but but in videos i'm not going to write html because it takes a lot of time so i don't want to waste time on that okay so we will start building our project from app.js you have to design these html files by your own so let's start building our project okay so here first of all i create a new folder with the name employee okay so in this folder first of all i am going to create a file with the name app.js like that okay so first of all let's write here const express equals to require i am creating this project from totally scratch so that you have a better understanding that how we can build real world projects okay so i type here express and then i type here const app equals to express like that and then i will have to write here const path equals to require path we know that we use path from our previous videos and after that i have to set the middle layers so i simply type here app dot set first of all views so i type here views and path dot join directory name and then the views and after that i will type here app dot set the template engine so i type here view engine to ejs and after that i use here app dot use express dot static and use this public directory like that okay so we have set up our middlewares and now i have to listen on a port so now i'm not going to type here like app dot listen 3000 then a callback and console dot log server is started like that okay so now i'm not going to type here 3000 in fact i type here port okay and i create a variable here i type here const port equals to process dot environment dot port like this okay so what does this means now we are using uh, this hard coded port 3000 from last couple of videos now we have to follow the best practices to design our projects okay so this is the project in which we are going to follow all the rules so we don't have to write the port here we have to write all these configurations in a separate file so for that we have to create a new file in this folder with the name config dot env like that okay so in this file i have to create port 
that is 3000 like that i simply save that so to use this config file we have to install a package in our application so for that i simply type here const and i type here dot env this is the package name that we have to install for the configuration files so i type here dot env like that and also we have to set up the middleware for that so i simply type here dot n dot config and i type here the path where this file is and i simply type here dot slash config dot env like that okay so now we can use that process dot environment dot port okay so i just repeat this once again we have simply create a new file with the name config dot env and in this file we are going to write up all queries or all lines that are used for configuration like database url we are also going to write database url in our next video here right okay so right now we just type here port which is 3000 and we have just type here process dot environment dot port that is 3000 right here okay so to use this we have to install a package called dot env okay so just require that package here and simply just drive this configuration line to use that in our application okay now we have set up this configuration file and now it's time to use the mongoose package to connect to our database okay so for that i simply type here const mongoose equals to i type here require and i type here mongoose like that okay and we also have to set up the lines to connect to database for that i simply go back to my config.env and in this file i type here database url so i type here data base local because we are using our local database we are not using our online database so that's why i type here database local equals to and i type here mongodb colon slash localhost and port is 27017 we know that and the name of the database that is employees so i type here employees like that so this is the url that will help us to connect to local database so mongodb then we have this local database and the port 27017 we have seen this port when we run our mongodb server okay and then we have to write the slash and then the employees which is the name of the database so this is the url that we help us to connect to the mongodb database okay now i simply go back to my app.js file and i have to write some lines here uh, to use database i simply type here mongoose dot connect now this connect method will help us to connect to our mongodb database okay so i simply type here we i have to connect to this process dot environment dot database local okay i have to connect to this local database and then we have to pass a object here which is nothing but just some piece of code that will help us to ignore all the warnings that node.js will give us okay so you have to write these lines as it is first of all we have to type here use new url parser i type here true you don't have to understand that you have to write these lines as it is so use unified topology type here true then one more line you have to write here is use create index and then you have to type here true okay so this piece of code will help us to connect to mongodb database okay so i simply type here comments connecting to mongodb database like that okay so simply i have type here mongoose which is this package dot connect method that will help us to connect to the database then i have type here process dot environment dot local database which is right here this one this url we can also type this url right here but we have to follow the best practices so i have my configuration lines in my separate config file okay and after that you have to pass this object with these lines to just ignore some warnings okay 
and once you set up that your database is now ready to use okay so that's it for this video in our next video we are going to create a views directory in which you write our first EGS file build our first EGS file which is a home page and then we will add more routes in that okay so I will see you in the next video okay so welcome back so today in this video we will write our further code for this project okay so now it's time to create our routes so now in this project we have to follow the best practices so I'm not going to write our routes in this app.js folder file because if we write our all routes in this file it will may go into 200 or 300 lines okay so this is not a good practice to write each and every code in this app.js file so we are going to create a separate file for our routes and then we will require those route file in this app.js file okay so for that I simply create a new folder in this employee folder okay so I simply new folder and I type here routes like that and in this folder I will create my routes so I'm going to create a new file here simply I type here employees.js in which we have all our routes okay so first of all I have to type here const express equals to require the express package here and then I type here const router express dot router okay so we don't have used the app here we have used this express package and then we have used this express and we have used this router method because when we will use our router separately we have to use this router method okay and we store that in this router variable okay so after that first of all I have to type here router dot get first of all the home page so slash then a call back here request response and similar type here res dot render and I type here the index dot EGS okay now we have to require this file in this app.js file but before requiring that we have to export all the data so that we can import that data in this app.js file we have to export from here and then we will import it in here okay so for that you have to type here module dot exports okay so we will export this router from here and when we will export this router this means that we are passing all the routes to this app.js file we have export it from here and then we have to import in app.js so for that I simply type here const employee routes equals to and we just require that as we require our normal packages so I give the path here I type here dot slash routes slash employees like that so we have our employees dot js file in routes folder and then we have to move one step back and then go inside it okay so we have just export our routes from there and import that in app.js file okay now we also have to pass our middleware to use this so for that I simply scroll down and at the end here I type app dot use employees routes that's it now we can use our old routes here I just repeat it once again first of all we cannot or it is not a good practice to write all our routes in app.js file okay so what we will do we will create a separate file that will contain our all routes and in that file I have just used this express package and I have used this dot router method here okay and after that normal routes like this one then I have to export that from here and then require those here like this then we have to pass a middleware that we want to use this route in this application so I type here app dot use this employee this employee routes okay so now we have set up this now we have to create our EGS file so I will create a new folder in here with the name views and in this folder I will create a new file with name index.ejs like that okay so I have my HTML code right here in sublime text you can see that I, I have already written it down here so what I do is I simply copy all data from here control C and then I simply paste that here okay then after that I have to also close the body tag and the HTML tag 
simply save that and just format the document like this okay and now this is ready to use I simply save that and now we can simply use that before doing that we have to install our old packages here so what I do here is I simply first of all type here cd to the employee then npm in it enter a couple of times then I simply type here npm i express then path then dot env which is our new package then mongoose then ejs and then dash dash save okay so our packages are now installed now I am going to use nodemon here because I don't want to write node app.js again and again okay we, we have set up the nodemon in our first section when we learned about npm so we know that we install the nodemon globally so that we can use it anywhere from this computer so for that purpose I simply type here nodemon and press enter okay so you can see that server is started I go back and I just close these files and I simply type here localhost colon 3000 and press enter and you can see that we get our first route you can see that there is no CSS right here the reason is that if I go back to my Visual Studio in this index.ejs file and you can see that here I have used uh, the source not link here I have downloaded all the libraries in my computer then I am using them by just uh, adding them here you can use the links right here I have all the links that I have used here so first one is simple bootstrap link second one is the data table that we have used in this basically project okay so this is just a table that has some functionalities that is built in bootstrap and that has a lot of features like sorting searching then this jQuery tables and then data tables bootstrap so you have to add all these five links in your project I have downloaded these file locally so I have in my computer system right here so you can see that I have all the files here so what I do is I simply copy all these files from here and then in my employee folder which is the folder for this project I am going to create a new folder with the name public and in this folder I will simply paste them here right like this okay so I create a new folder first of all with the name style sheets then I create a new folder with the name js then I create a new folder with the name libs for libraries okay so I simply move my this employee.js file in this js folder then I move this design.css in my style sheet here and then I move all these five libraries in my libs folder like this okay so you can use these links here or you can use them locally by downloading them or just by creating these files okay so I, I am using uh, these libraries locally by downloading them okay so now if I go back to my Visual Studio code I have to give the path here you can see public and then JS and then the path okay so I simply type here dot dot slash libs slash bootstrap dot CSS and then for this I also copy it from here like this and paste it here 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 and here and I simply type here the style sheets okay and now if I save it and go back and reload my you can see that now I get my old designs back okay so now if I just open all these files from here for example if I open this employer.js I have only this piece of code here and this piece of code is the code that you have to add to make this table work okay so this is table that you need uh, to add to make it work okay so you have to also add this JS file in your EJS file so I simply go right under that I type here script and then here I type source which is the dot slash uh, dot dot slash 
js slash employee dot js i simply save that and now if i go back here and reload it you can see that we got all the functionalities here search this filter uh, this sorting so means to say that i have just used this piece of code to make this work okay so this is the front end part i'm not going to explain it here i am just going to I have, as i have told you in my previous video that you have to design everything by your own and in this js file i have only this piece of code and in my libs i have all the libraries for bootstrap and other and in style sheet i have the design of css that contains only one uh, piece of code okay so you have to know about that i hope that you know about all the front end part okay our application home page is now working okay so now let's quickly add all the ejs files and from our next video we are going to make each option to do something okay so i simply go back and now you can see that i have only one ejs file here okay i have about three more files now this is not a good habit to write this html head and body for all the files we know that the, this code is going to same for all the files so what we are going to do here we are going to cut the common code like this nav bar and all this upper part and paste that in a separate file called header.ejs and then the lower part which is this one we are going to put them in the footer.ejs and then we can add that code in this file okay so let me do that first of all i simply create a new folder in muse directory with the name partials and in this folder i'm going to create a new file with the name header.ejs and a new file with the name footer dot ejs okay so what we are going to do here is we are simply going to cut this part and paste that in footer save that and if i go to up and i just remove this nav bar and all the upper code in this header dot ejs like that and then we can use this header here and then we can use this footer here by adding only one line okay so we can use this header and footer in our all files we don't have to paste this code again and again this is not a good habit to do that okay to import it we have to simply type here these tags and then we have to type these two hyphens here and in these hyphens we have to type here include and i type here the path which is the partials slash header like this and i simply copy it from here Control C and I paste it here and change it to footer. Let me save that and run it first. I reload that. We are going to get the same result here. Okay. So I just repeated once again what we have done here is we know that we have about four EGS files in this project. Consider that if we have about 10 to 15 files, then we know that every file will have a same piece of code on the top which is this head section or sometimes the navigation or the nav bar like in this case we have this nav bar common in all of the ejs files so what we do is we create a separate folders called partials you can type any name of this folder but partial is the most commonly used name by the developers okay so we create a folder with the name partials in views directory and in this partials we have our two files header.ejs and footer.ejs in header.ejs we include all the upper part or the header part and in the footer.ejs we have the footer path or the lower path that will be always same for all the files okay now, now it is not compulsory to write header or footer you can type anything here sometime we have a sidebar on our application so what we'll do we will simply create a new partial with the name sidebar.ejs and we just include that sidebar here then that sidebar will appear on all the pages which you in which you include that sidebar like we have included header here okay so in our next video we are going to add our remaining ejs or routes and then we will start properly working on all the options that we have in this project okay so i hope that you understand about the partials what that we have done in this video so i will see you in the next video welcome back to this course in our previous video we have set up this ejs first of all and now in this video we are going to uh make our new.ejs file for this add new employee which is a form and then we will add the data in the database using the form okay so let's do that i go back to my visual studio code and in here we have our header footer 
now i create a new file here with the name um new.ejs for new employee and in this first of all i have to go back to my sublime text and new.html i don't have to write this again and again because in our previous video we have set up the header and footer ejs files okay so i simply copy this div from here which is the form control c go back and paste it here and then we have to add these two lines to include my header and footer so i simply copy it from here and paste it right here and then i have to paste here the footer so i simply type here footer and then i simply scroll it down here i simply save that and now i have to go back to my employer.js file and i simply type here router dot get and i type here slash um, employee slash new okay and then the callback request response and then i simply type here res dot render new okay simply save that and now if i simply go back and reload it and go to the slash employee slash new you can see that our form is right here and our footer and header is automatically added okay now let's add a link to this add new employee button okay so simply go back to this header of ejs file and here in the navbar i have two links add new employee and search so we have to give it a link of okay so we already have a link here so you can see that link here is slash employee slash new okay and slash employee slash search will be a link for the search form okay so i simply save it and go back and if i just reload it and go to this add new employee you can see that i simply move to this form again if i go click on this employee database i go back to the home page because i have linked uh, in this header.ejs file i have given the link of the home page to this employee database system okay so if i go back and click on this add new employee our form is working and now we have to collect data from this employee and save that data in the database okay so before that we have to set up the schema for this uh, employee okay so for that i simply go back and i have to create a new folder here i simply just create a new folder in here with the name models we have to create a model for employee so i simply create a new file in this model folder with the name employee dot js okay and in this file i have to write some code that will help us to save data so first of all i require here const mongoose equals to require then i simply type here mongoose here okay and now we have to create a schema a structure for our employee okay so for that i simply type here new mongoose dot schema and then after that in this function i have to pass an object that will contain the schema first of all the name of the employee will be string then we have designation which is also string and then we have the salary of the employee which is number okay so i have created a schema for my employee schema means the pattern the structure of our employee okay so in this case there are three fields that we have to write for this project that is name designation and salary and simply name will be string designation will also be string and then the salary will be number okay then we have to save the schema in a variable so i type here let employee schema equals to new more mongoose dot schema okay and then we know that we have to require this model in this file because we have to use that uh, schema here in this file which is the express.js that contains all the routes okay so for that i simply type here module dot exports we have to export it from here which thing i have to export the model so i type here mongoose dot model and the model will be the employee so i type here employee 
and then I type here employee schema like this okay so done for this file so if I just go back to my employee.js file and now we have to require that model or that file here in this file so I simply type here const employee equals to require dot dot slash models which is the folder slash employee okay like this I have to put quotations here like this okay and now we can use that to save our data in the database so now we know that whenever we want to save data in the database we have to send a post request okay so this is a get request we have to send a post request to save our employee data in the database so to do that I simply type here router dot post and I have to send the post request to slash employee slash new okay and then after I have the callback request and response and in this route we have to write a code that will save data in the database so first of all we know that whenever we want to get data from a form we use body parser okay so for that I simply type here const body parser equals to require body parser like this and we also have to write a middleware for that so I simply type here app dot use body parser dot URL encoded and then we have to type here extended to true like that okay so we have used the body parser and set up the body parser here and now we have to go back and just type here let employee or let new employee like this and we're going to save an object in it so first of all we have to get name from the form so name will be request dot body dot name and then we have the designation will be request dot body dot designation and at last we have salary so salary will equal to request dot body dot and then we have the salary like that okay so we have to put comma here I simply save it and if I go back to my new dot EGS you can see that the name is name here in this we have designation and then the salary so we have just created an object here with the name new employee and then we have get all the data from the form which is requested body dot name and then all these three values okay and now we have to save this object in our database so to do that I am simply going to use a create method that we have used in our previous section so I simply type here employee which is right here this one that we have imported here that we export from here like this which is the schema basically so employee dot create we have to create an employee then we know that we have to pass an object here that contains data so in this we have separate variable so I simply type here employee dot create new employee and then we know that mongoose library supports both callbacks and promises I am not going to use callbacks here I am simply going to use the promises so employee dot create this employee then we have to type here employee employee and then I simply type here res dot redirect to home page like this okay and if there is some error then simply type here dot catch error I type here console dot log that error like that okay so I just repeat this program once again first of all we have our new dot EGS file in which we have a form that will collect data of employee okay 
And after that, we have create a new file with the name employee.js, which is our model file. We have created that file in models folder. Okay. So we have first of all required the mongoose package here. And then we have to create a schema for our employee. Okay. For example, if you want to create schema for your product, then you have to type here like product name, product price, product company. Then you have to give the structure or pattern of that product. Okay. So in this case, we are using employee. So we have to create a schema, a pattern for that employee. Okay. So I simply type here new mongoose.schema. Schema is the method for this mongoose. And then we have this type here, the pattern name, designation and salary. And then we know that we have to import this in this file. So for that, we have to export it from here. So I simply type here modules.export and we have to export this line. So we used another method of mongoose that is model. So this model method basically help us to model this schema with this name employee. This is a name that we are using right here. Here. Okay. So we have just export our schema from here and then we have simply import that in our or require that in our router file. Okay. And then we have used this router.post. We know that we use the post whenever we want to post some data. Okay. So I simply type here post on this URL, then the callback function. And in this, first of all, I have created an object that will collect data from the form by using the body. And we have also required the body parser package here and also set up the middleware here, right here. Okay. And then we have simply use this dot create method to, to add this data in the database. So I simply use here employee dot create. Then we pass that object in this function. And then we have used the promises. We can also use callbacks here. If we just type here comma, then callback. But we know that Mongoose sports promises also. And we know that using promises is a good habit. So I use here dot then. And then if this is successful, if data is added successfully, then we have to redirect back to our home page. If there is some error, we have to console.log that error. Okay. So I hope that this program will work for us. So I simply just type here npm i before that i simply press the control c to exit out from node mode and then simply type here npm i uh, body parser dash dash save and press enter package is installed successfully and then i type here node mode again and now if i just go back and reload it and go to add new employee from here I simply type here John that is manager and then I type here salary for example 12,000 and then when you click on add to database you can see that okay so we forgot to do something I go back simply from here to new.ejs and we have to type here first of all I type here action and the action will be slash employee slash new and then I have to sorry this is action and then I type here the method which is post definitely so now if I simply save it and save all the files and go back and if I just reload it and go to add new employee then I type here John manager 12,000 and when I click on add to database you can see that we are redirected to the dashboard. This means that our data has been successfully saved in the database. Now we want to show all the employees right here. So to do that, I simply go back to my VL Studio and go to index.ejs file. Okay. And here I have to start a loop and display all the content of the database. So I simply type here percentage. employees dot for each loop and for each employee we have to display the data and we have to display this tr each time so i simply cut it from here and paste it in here and click on format document like this and then i simply add here this one and this tag closing tag like this i save that and also i have to write here 
and I type here employee dot name let's copy it from here paste it here and then also paste it here and type here designation and then salary okay and also I have to pass this employee from employees I simply save it go back to employer.js and whenever we want to get the home page we want to get all the posts so for that I simply type here employee dot find method to find all the products I pass an empty object mean that I want to find all the employees and if it is successful then we have to pass these employees to the rest dot vendor I just cut it from here paste it here and I just pass here employees and then employees like this and also I add here dot catch if there is some error then we have to catch that and I type here console dot log the error save that and if I go back and reload it you can see that I get two results from here like this okay so this is the result from my previous database okay so if I simply click on add new employee and add one more here I type here Mike this will be boss then salary will be like 20,000 click on add database you can see that Mike has been successfully added here so we have add functionality to this add new employee button and to this form and we also saving our data in database and fetching it on the home page now in our next video we are going to set up this search button okay so i will see you in the next video okay so welcome back so in our previous video we have set up this add new employee button and we also have add some functionality to it and we are now able to store our data in database now if we want to search a particular employee by, by its name then we have to use our search form so let's do that in this video so first of all i simply go back here and to sublime text and i have this search.html template here so i simply copy it from here the div tag only copy go back and create a new views here with the name search.ejs and i simply paste that here and click on this format document like this okay and then i simply add my partials that is header and footer simply copy that from here and then paste it here this is the footer okay simply save that and I go back to my employer.js file and now I type here router.get I type here slash employee slash search then a callback request response I type here res dot render the search okay I simply save that and now if I go back reload that and click on this search button because we know that we already have a link to this button when I click on it you can see that I move to this search employee uh, form okay so now we have to add some functionality to this form okay so what we have to do here is when someone type her employee name then click on this search in database then we have to display the search results otherwise we don't have to display this search result uh, area here okay so we have to apply a if condition so I what I do so I simply go back to my visual studio and before doing that I want to write some comments here to make our work more easier I type here get routes starts here then I simply copy it from here and I simply paste it here and then here I type here ends here and then post route starts here like this and now I have to create one more route here so I type here router dot get 
we want to get a particular employee so i type here slash employee and then we pass a callback here request response and then we simply type here that we want to find our employee that user asked for so i simply go back to my search.ejs file and in here first of all i have to type here form then i type here action and i type here um slash employee and then i have to type here the method which is get because we want to get some data from this form by using this form okay so after this we have to go back and i simply type here let search query equals to um request dot query dot name okay and i store it in object so i simply type here name okay so what i have done here is simply i've created a variable with the name let search query then you have created an object name that is request dot query dot name so whenever we click on this form submit button we know that we will get this query by using this parameter that is request dot query dot name okay so we have that particular name in here okay and then and then we simply have to pass this object in the find method and then we can find that employee so to do that i simply type here employee dot find one because we only want to find one person okay and after that i type here search query that is this object and then if it is successful then i type here dot then and employee i simply type here if it is successful then we have to res dot render the template of employee that is search and then we simply pass here the employee like this okay then after we type here dot catch there is some error then console dot log that error like this okay so we have just set up it here user will definitely write the name in this field then it will press the button and when it press the button then we have to use this query then we will request from query the name of that person and store that in search query okay and then we pass this object in this find method we know that when we want to find anything in database we type here the object like this okay so in this case name should be equal to that query and then we pass this object in this find one method that and if it find that employee then we will simply render that search template and pass employee in that okay now we also have to go here and in the search results we have to display here the person name okay so i simply type here this one and i type here employee dot name then we have to control c from here and type here designation then salary like this okay so in this form it is search.egs i have also used this table to display my data okay now note that when i press the button then i have to display this result so for that i simply apply a check here i type here if employee then we have to display that otherwise we don't have to display that so i simply type here my tabs like this and also i have to display it here type here this one so like this and uh, if the employee exists then we have to display all the table otherwise we don't have to display the table okay so i simply save this and save this also if i go back and reload it and we got some error here so it says that employee is not defined if i go back 
okay so we have two routes for search here so what i do here is because if we want to just open this simple search form then we don't have passed any uh, object here so for that i simply type here employee is null like this so what happened here is when we load that search form by using this route then we, we are not passing any employee to that so that's why I give error that employee is not defined i simply save it and now if i just reload that and it works properly and you can see that our search stop is not right here if i type here uh, mike and click on search in database and you can see that we got our result right here okay if i type here this gulam and click on search in database you can see that i get data here so you can see also in the url slash employee and then name is equal to this and we get this name by using the request dot query dot name which is this one and we get its value and we search that value database and we get our result okay so i get my result here if i just reload that simply by clicking on the search button and then we don't have any search stuff here everything is working properly for this search i hope that you understand so in our next video we are going to set up this uh, update edit button because we want to update the data also of this employee okay so we will write the code for this edit button in our next video so that's it for this video i will see you in the next video welcome back to this course so in our previous video we have set up this search button and now in this video we have to set up this edit button when we click on this edit button we have to open a form in which we have this employee data then we have to change our data and when i click on the update button our data should be updated in the database okay so let's do that first of all i go back to my sublime and here i have added.html template okay so i simply copy it from here like this so i simply, co simply copy that go back and create a new ejs file here in the views directory with the name edit.ejs like that okay so i simply paste that here and also i add my partials so i simply copy that and paste it here and also the header on the top like this and i save that okay so now first of all i have to set the route for this one okay so we know that we want to update data so for that purpose i have to use the update method of http and before doing that i have to load the form so for that i have to send a get request so what i do is i simply under this i type here router dot get and we want to get slash edit and slash the id of that user so i simply type here id because we know that our id is always going to be changed for each employee so i type here colon edit and then i type here the callback request and response and first of all i have to find that employee so for that what i do is when someone click on this um uh where is my file index.egs when someone click on this button this one edit then we have to send it to the form that contains that data so for that i simply type here slash edit and slash the id of that user so to get the id i simply type here employee dot id okay so slash edit slash the id of that user that we click on okay so simply save that and now if i go back to my employee.js file and i simply type here let the search query which is the object that we have to pass we have to find by id and then we'll type here request dot params dot id which is this one right here so we get this id and then we will find that id in the database to do that i simply type here employee dot find one by using this search query and then if it is successful catch employee 
and then we have to render the edit form and we will pass the employee to form so employee employee and otherwise if there is some error dot catch the error I type here console dot log that error like this okay so what we have done here is we have simply type here this variable search query that will search that has the object request dot params dot id which is this id from the parameters and then we have this id which is the id of that object and we will find our employee with this id and if it is matches then we'll pass that employee to this edit here and here we have to type in the value so i type here value and i type here value should be uh, employee dot name then i simply copy it from here paste it here and here and I simply i type here designation and then the salary okay so simply save that and let's test if it is work or not i go back reload that and now if i just click on this edit from here and i think so we got some error um oops we have type here catch we have to type here then okay so now if i simply save it again and now if i just go back reload that now if i click on edit you can see that we have set up this update form and our data is just present right in this form and now we have to write a code that will update data when i click on this update employee button okay so i simply go back and, and now we have to use uh, the router dot put to update the data we know that we have this get and post to post some data and whenever we want to update data in the database we have to use this put method which is the http method okay so i simply scroll down from here and i simply copy it from here control c and type here post routes and here and after that we have to start the put routes so put and put routes ends here okay so in this we have to write our put route so first of all i type here router dot put and then we have to type here the path i type here slash edit slash that id and then the callback request response and then we have to type here uh, first of all we have to search that so simply type here let search query equals to id and request dot params dot id and then we have to update that so simply type here employee dot update one okay then i pass that search query here which we want to update and now we have to update the data to the new one so i simply type here comma then i have used this object and i type here dollar and we have to set the new data so i type here colon again and then the object that in here i type name will be request dot body dot name okay and then the designation will be request dot body dot designation and then salary which is request dot body dot salary like that okay so employee dot update one we have to match this query if we found that then we have to set the name to this designation to this and salary to this okay and then if it is successful then we type here dot then 
employee and I simply type here res dot redirect to the home page if it is up, if update is successful okay and then I type here dot catch error and console dot log that error right here okay so this is the put route in which we have first of all uh, this is a search query which is the ID then we have used this update one method to update that if it is successful then we have to redirect to the home page and then we if there's some error then we will catch it right here before moving on if we go back to my edit.egs we have to set up this form here because this time we want to send the put request okay so I simply type here method or action and that will be slash edit and slash the ID that is um, employee dot id and then we have to write here the method now we are using get and post from our previous videos but this time we have to use the put method if i type here put this is not going to work the form only accepts get or post it doesn't accept put or delete so to make it happen we have to use our npm package if i go to my browser you can see that we have a package here that is called method override if you see its definition it says that lets you to use http verbs such as put or delete in places where the client doesn't support it so in this case uh, here we cannot use put here so we have to use a package called method override okay so first of all i have to go to the app.js file and i simply type here here i type const and method override equals to require and then I type here method override like this okay and then we also have to set up the middleware to use that so for that I simply scroll down and I type here app dot use um, method override and I pass here underscore method so this is the middle bit that we have to set up before using that I just type here middleware for method override like that okay middleware okay so now I have set up the middleware if I go back to here and then I have to use here put if I go back to the package page you can see that here first of all we have to um, use the write that middleware here and then to use that first of all we have to type here method is equal to post then in the action we have to type here the resource which is a URL and then I have to pass here underscore method is equal to delete or put okay so I simply copy it from here go back and I simply paste that right here and change lead to put and also the method to post okay so in this way we can use this put route to make it work okay and one more thing we have to do here is we have to type a invisible or hidden you can see that here we have to type a hidden input here so I simply copy it from here to make it work and I simply paste that here input type is equal to hidden name is method and value is equal to put okay so now it will work unfortunately we cannot use method is equal to put so that's why we have to install a separate package that is called method override then we have to set up some settings for that and after that it will work fine okay so I simply save that and go back to employer.js and save it and I simply control C from here and type here npm i method override and dash dash save and it is installed successfully okay so I type here nodmon again 
if I go back and just reload my database like this and now if I want to change its salary I will type here like 15,000 and when I click on the update employee you can see that it has been successfully updated to 15,000 okay so if I want to change his data I simply click on edit then I type here like project manager okay so I simply save that you can see that this had been successfully updated right here okay so in this way our update button is also working here edit button is also working here and now in our next video we are going to set up this delete button okay so i hope that you understand what you have done in this video so i will see you in the next video welcome back to this course so in our previous video we have set up this edit button and today in this video we are going to set up this delete button okay so first of all if i go to my visual studio and go to this uh, index.ejs here and you can see that for edit i have used a anchor tag and for this delete button i have used this form tag okay so we have to do is when we click on this delete button we have to quickly delete that record from this database or delete that document from the database so for that, that means we have to send the delete request. That's why I have used the form here and this form I have a button that is delete button, okay? And we know that we can only use post or get here. We cannot use put or delete here, okay? So in our previous video, we have installed a package called method override that works fine for us for put and delete. So what I do is I simply go to this edit.ejs and copy it from here, this whole path. I copy it from here, control C and i go to index.ejs and paste it right in the action here okay so this will be slash delete slash that employee id and then the method will be delete okay and also we have to type here the uh, hidden value that is delete okay and that's it for this form simply save that and go back to my employee.js and write a route for this okay so I simply copy this command from here and this will be delete route starts here okay so here I simply type router dot delete and I pass here the URL first of all which is slash delete slash the ID and after that I have the callback and in this first of all I have to find the user so I simply type here let search query equals to uh, id request dot params dot id then after that we have to delete that one employee so I simply type here employee dot remove that we have learned in our previous section then I simply pass here search query and then if it is successful the record it is successfully then I have to type here then employee and I simply type here res dot redirect to the slash or the home page and dot catch the error the console dot log the error like this okay so this is our router route that we have had for this delete okay so first of all we have used router dot delete then the url then the callback in here first of all we have the search query that is research by id then we use employee.remove method that we have learned in our previous video and then we will if it is successful then we redirect to our home page otherwise there is some error we will simply console log log that error okay so i simply save that and if i go back and reload this page if i want to delete the last one i simply click on this delete button click on delete and you can see that the record has been deleted successfully if i want to delete the first one it is also deleted successfully okay so you can see a warning here depreciation warning collection dot remove is depreciated use delete one delete many or bulk write instead okay so we have so this remove method is depreciated we have to use one of these 
So I use delete one. Control C from here. I paste it here. Simply save that. And now if I go back and reload the page. And now if I delete that. You can see that there is no warning right here. Okay. So let's add one more employee here. Quickly add. And this 10,000. Okay. So now add new employee is working, search is working, edit is working, delete is working. We have performed all the CRUD operations. Okay. So now one thing is missing that whenever we deleted uh, this employee, then we have to show a proper message here that employee has been deleted successfully. Or when we add our employee, we have to display a message that the employee has been added successfully. So for that, we have to use two packages. And we are going to do all that stuff in our next video. So that's it for this video. I will see you in the next video. Okay, so welcome back. We have performed our all current operations in this application. Now one thing is remaining that we have to display proper messages on the top that the employee is deleted, employee is added or the data has been updated. Okay, so to do that, we have to use two packages. First one is the express session. Okay, so we have to install this uh, package with this flash package, which is connect flash that is the main package to use so this connect flash help us to display the proper messages uh, in our application okay so you can see that the flash is a special area of sessions used to store messages okay so this basically does is we save our messages uh, in this session and for to and to maintain that session we use this express session okay so we have to install these two packages to make it happen okay so i simply go back to my visual studio code and press ctrl c here and type npm i express session and the second package is connect flash and then i type here dash dash save okay so there is some error i simply run that again and now they are installed successfully okay so we have installed our packages now we have to import or require them in our app.js so i simply go to the top and i simply type here const session equals to require and the express session so express session and const we have to use the flash equals to require the connect flash like that okay so we are also going to use this session when we will learn about our when we will discuss about our authentication okay so this basically help us to maintain a session okay and this flash help us to display the messages okay so i simply scroll down and i have to set up the middleware for the connect flash so I simply type here app dot use the flash. Okay. So this is the middleware for flash. So I type here middleware for connect flash. Okay. And for that we also have to set up middleware. for uh, express session okay so i simply type here app dot use session and in it i have to pass some value first of all the secret which is the string you can type anything here for example i type here node.js and after that you have to type here resave which is true and then i have to type here save uninitialized to true okay so you have to type it as it is okay you can type any string here for secret so in this way we have set up our session and set up the middleware okay so we have set up the middleware for session and also we have set up the middleware for disconnect flash but one more thing that we have to do here we have to set up the messages okay so simply i type here the command first of all setting messages um variables 
globally okay so i type here app dot use we are going to write our own function here request response and then i type here next okay so in this middleware first of all i have to type res dot locals dot you can type anything here for example i type here success message should be request dot flash and i pass here success message okay i simply copy and paste it for error so this is for error and also i type here like um, error and the last thing I have to do here is I simply type here the next function. That's it. So first of all, we have installed two packages, Express Session and this Connect Flash. Set up the middleware for Session. Then we have had the middleware for this Flash. Then we have to write our own middleware to set up the variables globally. So what this middleware is going to do is whenever there is a message that says success message that will use success message then we will say to flash that we want to display the success message okay if there is some error then we will display then we will request from flash the error messages okay then we use this next method simple as that and you will have a better understanding in a minute when we will use it in our application okay so first of all i go to the employee.js now first of all i apply it on delete here now before redirecting i have to display a message that uh, your employee has been deleted successfully. Okay, so for that I type here request dot flash and I have to flash a message. First of all, which type of message? I type here success message. Success message. And what is the message? Message that employee deleted successfully. Okay, so we have to flash this message. So this success message, this one is this right here that we are set up here, which is the locals. We are set up it globally so that we can use it anywhere. Okay. And uh, before using that, I have to also set up the variable in that file in this over, uh, this is on in the index.ejs file. So for that, I am simply going to create a partial. Partials mean that we create a separate piece of code, a separate file that we can use again and again in any file as we are using header and footer so i simply create a new ejs file here with the name like messages.ejs and in this file i simply type two or three lines that says if success message and success message should not be equal to null Okay, so I remove it right now from here to show that if I don't write it, then what will happen? Okay, so if I simply type here, if success message, then I have to display a div tag that has a class of alert, that is bootstrap class, alert, alert, success. And it will say that message that we pass in the flash message before redirect. So success message like this else if error message then we have to use this div tag again and type here error and also i type here error and also i add some tags here Simply copy that, control C and paste it here. And also I just type this one here, control C, control V and then control V and save that. Okay. So we have set up this partial. Now we have to use it index.ejs and I want to display at the top just after, just before this table. So I simply in this container I type 
this partial is copied from here paste it here and change it to messages okay so i simply save that and i think it will work now i simply type here nordmon so i go back to this and reload it you can see that i have this box here why because uh, if i go to the message.eg as you can see that we say that if success message and success message always exists because we have set up it globally here like here so that's why we have to type here condition that if success message and make sure that success message is not equal to null okay so then it will not display that let's copy it from here oops we have type here and like this i just copy it from here and i just paste it right here save that and now if i save that and go back and reload it now it will not here okay so if i click on lead from here you can see our proper message employer deleted successfully if i reload that it will gone if i click on edit from here again you can see that employee added successfully so now let's add these flash messages everywhere in this project okay so i simply use it for error also i simply copy it from here actually both lines copy that from here and paste it here and i change here success to error and we say that there is some error let's concatenate that error in the flash message okay then we direct to the home page so i simply copy these two lines from here and paste it in every catch like here then we have to write here and then we have to write here then we also have at the top this one and also here okay so we have set up all the error messages then we have to display the success messages everywhere so whenever we update our data right here we have to display a message uh, employee data updated successfully like this okay and then also and at the top then we will um, basically add the data in the post request right here we also have to display a message that employee data added to database successfully like this okay and one more thing i have to do here is that when we have when we search our, our employee then if that employer doesn't exist and we also have to display a message so for that here is if i type here if employer doesn't exist then i type here else and i type here these tags and then i simply type here a div statement that will says the error so i simply go back to my message.ejs and just copy it from here paste right here and i say that the employee does not exist with this name okay and then i just type here margin top of four simply save that and now if i go back and use this application once again i reload it add new employee i click on add new database you can see that employee added database successfully okay if i want to search that 
before that I add one more here this is project manager and I type 15,000 add to database it is also successfully added in the database if I go to the search you can see that employer doesn't exist here with this name it shows right here if I go back to the search.ejs first of all we have to type here danger instead of error if I go back to my messages and also I type here danger alert error is not a class of bootstrap alert danger is the class okay so I simply go back and save that and now if I just check it if employee then we have to display all this data otherwise else I want to display this here save that and now if I go back and reload that we get here employer doesn't exist so what I do here is I simply type here uh, if else if uh, employee employee is not equal to blank then we have to do that okay so I simply save that and now if I go back and reload that you can see that it's gone okay so now if I type here uh, I will see John and Mike okay so I type here John you can see the data of John here if I type here Mike you can see the data of Mike here if I type here uh, something like this that doesn't exist in our database and click on this search in database you can see that employer does not exist with this name okay so this is working properly so now our current application is working properly everything is done and I hope that you understand each and everything by the way in my next video which is the last video of this section I am going to explain all this code all this program all this project once again just overview so that you have a better understanding about it so I will see you in the next video welcome back to this course so this is the last video of this section in, in which I just want to give you overview about the code or the project that we have done in this section okay so let, first of all let's see I have first of all I have my app.js file that contains express in that then all the packages that I have installed okay then I tell you that in our previous videos we use routes or write our routes in app.js file but this is not a good programming approach we always have to follow the best practices so that's why we have created a separate file for our routes in the routes folder with the name employees so this is employee.js that contains all the routes get post put or and delete okay so in this file first of all we have just required the express and we have used the router method here from this express package okay and then we have just export all that router using modules.export and then equal to routes and we export it from here and then we have simply import it right here or require it right here and after that we have uh, just here at the bottom instead of using this port I have a created a separate file called config.env okay so this help so this is configuration file in which you have a port number and database URL this time we are using database local so simply there is database local URL here it is mongodb localhost port and slash the database name okay so for that I have used a new package called dot env so simply I have installed that and set up it right here okay and then we simply connect our application with database using the mongoose package so I simply type here mongoose dot connect method in which I have typed process dot environment dot database local which is this one and then some I have I have passed some values here in object that you don't need to know about that you have just passed it these values as it is these basically clear all the warnings that we get when we run our application okay after that I have set up the middlewares that we have done in our previous videos also and after that we have uh, use that routes here by using app.use okay and then we also have learned about the partials so when I go to the index.ejs you can see that I have all the HTML and EGS code here we know that the header and the footer of HTML is almost same for example for in this case we have this navbar 
navbar is same for every file if i go to this add employee navbar is same if i go to search navbar is same so means that navbar is common in every file so what you have done here we have created a separate file with the name header.ejs okay so in that header.ejs we have put all our upper code that starts from html tag right here and then put all the navbar code and the upper code in that folder and we have just include that header in this here by using this syntax this tag and then, and then this closing tag then i have used this include method in which i have typed the path which is partial slash header and in the same way i have added the footer partial which is this one okay so the basic idea is to write small piece of code okay and then this is just like we have write one piece of code save it in a file then we are using that piece of code again and again by just calling it okay like a function okay so i have saved these partials in the partials directory in the views directory okay so partial is just the naming convention you can use any folder here but most of the time developers node.js developer use this partials directory okay it doesn't mean that we always create header and footer we can also create some other partials for example if some application has a sidebar and we know and the sidebar is common on all pages so what we will do we simply create a separate file like sidebar.ejs which is partial and in that file we place our all sidebar code and then we add that partial in our file and just after including that we can use that sidebar on every page okay and after that we have learned about after that we have simple four ejs files which is index search edit and new.ejs okay and after that we have just and after that we have created one more folder here with name models okay so in the models we have one file called employer.js and in this file we have created a schema for our employee okay so i have just imported the mongoose package here then i have created here a new schema by using new mongoose dot schema and then i have typed the pattern or the structure of my employee which is name designation and salary after creating that i have just model i have used this model method to model this schema with this employee okay so i just type here employee and then type the schema here and after that i have just export that by using the module dot exports okay and just require it here at the top of this file you can see here const employees equal require models slash employee and now we can use this model uh, to perform all our current operations like find create remove or delete etc like that okay and after that we have used one more thing here that is called the flash messages and the express session so these two packages help us to display proper messages when we perform some action for example if we want to delete something after deleting that we have to display a message proper message that your product or your employee has been deleted so for that purpose we have used these two packages called session express session and connect flash we have to set up the middleware for that that we set up here then we have created our own middleware to set up these success message and error message globally okay and after that we have used that in our routes one more thing that we have done here is we know that whenever we submit a form we can only send two requests through form one is get and one is post and if we want to update data or delete data then we have to use different http methods like put or delete so for that we don't have any method in form so for that we have used a package called method override okay so this method help us to basically use put and delete and we have just used it right here set up the middleware and then we have used that in our forms like you can see here if i go to the edit.ejs okay you can see that here first of all we have to type the link which is resource then we have to put the question mark underscore method equals to put or delete whatever you want and then we have to pass a hidden input in this form you can see that type is hidden name should be method and the value should be put or delete okay so in this way we can also use that to update and delete our data in the database so this is the basic project that we have created in this section okay so in this section we have learned three to four new packages 
we also have created our first application that uses express node and mongodb together we also learned about a new package called mongoose and we have also used best practices to make this project we have used our configuration file we have used the models and partials to make it more efficient project okay so i hope that you understand what we have done in this project so that's it for this video i will see you in the next section